you need to get a better React developer. So today I got for you five best practices I wish I knew earlier because getting these things right will instantly make you better. And stay tuned to the end because there's one best practice I now regret learning. So I'm using Next.js here. It is a framework built on top of React, but you can apply all these best practices not only to Next.js, but also for every other React meta framework or to React itself. And the first best practice I have for you today is hooks, because you should use hooks. They are just functions. And that's something I learned pretty, pretty late. You know those hooks like use state and use effect, but actually you can write hooks on your own. So let's say I have this example here. I have some kind of component which has some functions that are all related to the session storage. So I do some kind of logic here that is all related to each other. And then I even have more functions and then I return a complex UI here at the bottom. So what we can do now is we can create a hooks directory anywhere and put a hook inside of this. Convention is to name it with a use in the beginning, like use state, use effect, or here now use session storage. So I take these three functions now, put it into a wrapper function called use session storage, and there we go. I'm just returning these functions here now, and in a different example here now, I'm just calling use session storage, get these three things and can work with them. And that's great because somehow it's now reusable. So if I have another component which needs to get set or remove an item as well, I can just call this use session storage and get provided with this method. So this is not tightly coupled to this one component here now. Now you can, for example, add more things in here like state management because then you actually have a real hook. Let's get to best practice number two, which is good component design. And good component design is consistent component design. So what do I mean with that? One thing I learned in big code bases is you should do things always the same. So for example, you could write type good component props, but you can also use an interface, for example, and it will work just the same. I mean, the syntax is a little bit different, but it's somehow the same. And of course, I could use object destructuring, but I can also just replace that with props and access all those things with the props variable here. So I could write props.h and props.email. The logic works the same. And that's what I mean with consistency. You want to have things consistency because you have different options for things like interface or type, props or object destructuring, or you can take an arrow function like I'm doing here, or you could actually write function here. So good component design comes from consistent component design. You want that all your components have the same principles. Or for example, this logical structure here, where you have states at the beginning of your component, then you have those functions like click listeners, and then you have side effects. This is like a logical structure and you should maintain this in every component because that is making components more maintainable and easier to read. So keep that in mind and learn this best practice because learning is so important as a developer and that's where the sponsor of today's video comes in scrimba because scrimba has done something i never saw before but we will get to that scrimba is just great when it comes to learning you have courses you have topics you have projects like airbnb clones that get built into the courses and there's this new topic called full stack and in full stack we for example have courses like learn next years and the Great thing here now is if I start a video, that doesn't look like a typical video here, right? It's not, because Scrimba done something that is awesome. You code and you learn at the same time. So they merging it together. So you have the video here, but at the same time, you also have a code editor here. So you're not doing the typical learning where you learn on one side, then you're pausing the video, then you go to the other side and do it on your own. No, you're watching the video and doing it at the same time. This is revolutionizing learning. With the link in the description, you get 20% off on Scrimba's pro plan. And thanks to Scrimba for sponsoring this video. So let's move on to the third best practice, which is the composition pattern. So compositioning means taking small pieces, build them together to achieve something great, something bigger. So here we see that, for example, for the page component, where the page component is not just the page component, but also accepts a header, a content with a sidebar and a footer. So we're compositioning everything together here. So you have all those small components here, which are getting combined. And you know that, for example, from Shetzian. So Shetzian is also using the composition pattern. So if I have this accordion here, for example, you see we have in the accordion, we have an accordion item, which then has a trigger and a content, which has one big advantage. It is just easier, easier to maintain and easier to read because I directly understand how a accordion is set up. Let's imagine I just have something like accordion, which has then somehow items like that. 
I have no idea how this accordion is working and let's say I want to fix something in the accordion trigger, then I have to move into this accordion which has everything in one component and I'm just getting overwhelmed. And in that approach where I'm compositioning everything together, I can just go into the trigger and change something. The fourth best practice is you should name your things right. Because there are a lot of possibilities, right? If you have files, for example, you can write them in kebab case, you can write them in camel case, or you can write them in Pascal case. And if you are in your component, it's the same. What case could you use for your component names, for example? So what is the convention here? It's pretty easy. Good naming is kebab case for files. So like that. And if you are in your file, you should use camel case for types or interfaces and your components. And everything that is not type or component, like for example variables or props or function names, they all should be Pascal case. That's the whole magic. Stick to that. Because then you achieve a great system and everything gets easier and maintainable. And then we have the fifth, this is so much TH, which is optimization. And I said in the beginning, I regret learning the last one. And that's exactly optimization. Because what is optimization? We have functions from React like use callback, use memo or memo, which are just optimizing the performance of our application. So memo, for example, is memoizing components. Then we have use memo, which memoizes expensive calculations. And then we have use callback, which is memoizing function references. So functions get not newly created every time. The thing here is now that we don't need to do that anymore because there is the React compiler. React compiler is actually stable now for production. So if you're using React 19 and uh, opting into the React compiler, you don't need to do any optimization in 99.9% .9 of cases. And that's already it. You just learned five best practices. Have a great day. Bye-bye.